almost nine o'clock. Okay, now it's nine o'clock. It's time. I've got 45 seconds left on my countdown, so it's clearly out of sync. It's time to fade down the tunes and continue our ongoing mission to try and get our bloody NPCs to walk through a door. All right. So I wait for the countdown to finish? Nah. Right, my green screen might be a bit dodgy. Yep, it is a little bit. Let's see what needs to go on there. That needs to be going over there. There we go. Do I look a bit weird? I always look a bit weird. Um, let's move my... You know what? I've noticed I'm much smaller than I used to be. I'll go for a big Julian today. Big airlock, so airlock software. Look at that. I am a little bit fizzy, aren't I? Uh, let me just see if I can tweak that. So webcam, filters, and uh, smoothness, is it? Whoa, okay. I think it's just the fact that I'm wearing this, like, chavy little hat. Um, let's see. What can I do with it? Uh, similarity, right? It's so sensitive. Whoa. Whoa. Better, eh? A little bit better. All right. Done. All right. Big me today. Big me. If our head gets in the way, well, tough. I'll try and look out for it. So, uh, let's fire up Godot. See where we're at. Sportio. Still no game name. Okay, here we are. So, in our last episode, we had a few things. We'd set up this character script, and we were working on this move. We want to try and get our character to move. Uh, I'm going to close all the other tabs. So it's character. This is one script. Our event controller was telling our characters to try and do that what they wanted. And we also had a Graham script in character scripts. Everyone's using the Graham script at the moment. Graham has a job to do, and this is his job. So, <clears throat> Graham's job is to uh, get up, get showered, do his thing. Um, now, what I might do is... Yeah. You know what, I'll just, let's simplify this a little bit. So his job is just to stay here in the living area. Then his path to work is living area, study, living area, balcony. Um, then that means he ends up in the balcony. So from the balcony, he's working. So we're going we're gonna to have him stay in the balcony. Uh, yeah. Okay, so he can move between these four areas randomly. Um, and then path to quarters. We're going to get him back to the living area. It would be great if we could actually just say, right, this is where he goes. Like a target path. Um, I'm sure we can do pathfinding. I was thinking about it earlier. It's no different to any other pathfinding. Not that I've ever done pathfinding before, but uh, we... What I was looking at before was like working out what exits led where. So we got to create like a little network and then work out, okay, we can have a scan and see what the quickest route from current location to another location is by traversing through all the networks until it finds the best path. Uh, when it finds the best path, it goes, that's the route I'll be taking and off it goes. It should be super simple. So I think we can do some uh, proper pathing with our, with our guys. So I've said path to quarters here, and path to work, uh, which means he's living in the, he's going to be working from the balcony. Um, whatever. Anyway, um, and he goes back to the living area, and then he sleeps in the living area. <coughs> so, sure. Um, okay, so at the moment, all he does is at 8.01, he tries to move. Here we go. Oh, actually, does he? 
found exit study for player AI. Don't think he does try and move yet. He just automatically tries to move. So we've got a script called try move study and it says, yeah, I found an exit for the study. So that's all we've done so far. We haven't actually created any dynamic code for it. So um, let's switch to our live coding screen. And oh, there's little me. Let's pump me up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, okay, so we found the exit for the study in try move. Try move is part of the character script. So here it is up here, try move. So pass in the string, name of target location, then attempt to move the player there. So maybe this should be a full pathing, or maybe it should just be Try and move. <clears throat> It'd be much cooler if our character knew how to get there. And then just step through the current places until it found that place. Then our path. Uh, what's better? To define the path that the player will take or to let him find his own way there based on a pathing algorithm. I think the first step is to get him to go through the door. If I can do that tonight, and we've got time left over, then I'll I'll look at doing a, a pathing algorithm. So um, let me just take note. So I try not to forget. So event manager. So create pathing algorithm for NPCs. Hi there. <coughs> how are you? Hey, Ender Rifter. I'm good, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. How you, how are you today? Are you uh, working on a little bit of Godot yourself? That's good to hear. I'm okay. Jid. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. Uh, the uh, voice isn't particularly good on this. I've always been meaning to. Oh, cool. Nice. Oh, there's some really good, easy tutorials out there. I'd highly recommend uh, Heartbeast, uh, spelt... Heartbeast, that's how I I'm started out. I'm waiting for the Vulcan branch to be merged fully. Oh, you're going to go for 3D, are you? <clears throat> BC Vulcan is cool. It certainly is. Yeah, um, I've just started looking a little bit at the 3D side of things. Um, but uh, I have to say, I'm a bit of a... Well, I'm not teaching anyone here. I am on a learning journey. So I am literally just learning from scratch. But I'm getting there. Making progress. Have you done any uh, any Godot streaming at all? Any or any any other games in any other engines? Me too. XD. No. Okay, cool. Well, you know what? No better time than to literally. My voice ask... is awful. <laughs> Everyone has that same voice, unfortunately. Actually, you you've said more than anyone has ever said on the on the uh, on the stream so uh, if, if enough people were talking I'd probably turn it off but you know what at the moment every time anyone says anything I'll miss it and I'll be coding away and then 10 minutes later I'll be like oh yeah if I'd just seen that I would have known how to fix that bug um, what was I going to type in uh, uh, Godot Heartbeast honestly this is where I started uh, just forgetting the, the fundamentals this one, Godot 3D 2D platform. Really know is. That's clouds. Nothing at all about working in front of a camera. Clouds. Big up, said Luke. Afternoon or evening, wherever and whenever you are. <laughs> My name is Benjamin. <laughs> that voice is just crazy. Uh, hold on, my dog is moaning to get out. Two seconds. He'll be scratching to get back in next. Yeah, so uh, the platform game tutorial, a classic from 2018. But honestly, it's just it's just really b basic. Gets you uh, accustomed to the actual what's what and putting the nodes together, regardless of whether you're going to make a 2D game. I'm not really 
into making the 2D games myself. Um, I am more engaged. GD in script. Uh, yep, there's a bit of GD script. So yeah, I'm I'm more engaged in just kind of. Well, I'm making an audio game because I'm rubbish with graphics, and um, well, I'm pretty much rubbish with everything. So, but I'm focused on the programming, right? So, why not focus on something where I don't need to get a load of people to to help out too much? Anyway, it turns out I've got a load of people helping out with this. I've got voices and all sorts of things. I'll show you what I've got. I don't know if you've seen it already. I've got an area. Same. If you start here, I've got a timer, and then you can like interact with objects. So at the moment, this is all going to change, but it's just like a debug, right? I so can't I can... draw and I can't compose. There you go. See, same here. I used to love trying to compose, but I was never really good at it. So I've got TV. Good evening. And I've got things you can interact with. I've got a character that you can click and it triggers a cut In screen. Basically, a code monkey. Nice. Yeah, code monkey's good. What languages have you, uh, or what language would you say is your preference at the moment? C hash. <laughs> Oh, nice. C hash. C sharp. Um, yeah. Oh, that's handy. Well, then you can. I've do... done too much in C hash. Brilliant. Well, the, it, well, Godot engine supports C sharp, right? So um, I haven't even touched C sharp. In fact, C I thought. C, P, P, and C are cool. Well, I thought. Rust is awesome. I thought C was the same as C sharp. I thought it was like something similar. I didn't realize it was so, so much like Java. Uh, I've done a bit of Java before when I, I was at uni. I looked into native with Rust. Oh yeah. I haven't looked at Rust. Let's have a look at Rust. What's Rust? I've heard of it. Oops, not the game. Rust. Ah, cool. All right, I'll have to have a look. I'm more a web guy, so I'm fairly strong in PHP. Uh, do a bit of JavaScript, and that's about it. This looks really interesting. Rust with Wasm. With Wasm? It's Wasm. Wasm? A web assembly. Master Rust. Let me look at it. I want to, I want to see an example of Rust. Uh, API? Cool. Okay. What's special about Rust? https colon double forward slash doc dot rust dash lang nice. dot org forward slash book <laughs> forward slash ch zero one dash zero two dash hello dash world dot html all right b r u h cool nice Rust is very safe. Mmm. Looks nice. What sort of apps would you develop in Rust? What's its uh, best use scenarios? It's low level, but you don't really get some of the more difficult to debug problems. Mm. Like double free. Mm. Or memory overwriting. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't go anywhere near C and C++, to be honest. I'm... Honestly, I haven't got the patience. I did a bit of it in uni, and I was just like, whew. PHP, just, you know, I'm spoiled with it, to be honest. You could write the worst code in the world, and it still seems to work. I would use it in small console apps. All right, okay. Oh. But TBH, I don't write enough Rust. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean you've got to so have a reason, not right? not the best person to ask. 
yeah, you've got to have a purpose for your for your next project. Um, There's lots cool. of projects going on. What's your next project, though, Ender? Amethyst Game Engine is a game engine, duh, written in Rust. All right, cool. Let's have a look. Currently, in working on a networking lib in C hash. Oh, cool. What? Uh, networking for what? Gaming or? For a game. Cool. Nice. You know, I always fancied. Um, you ever played Planetarian? That's the plan. At least. Uh, is it Planetarian? Game? Planetarion? No. Planetarion. Planetarian. So, like, imagine this game where you've got, uh, you know, thousands of players and you start off in a solar system and you've got a planet in that solar system and you're there with ten of the, or nine other players. There's ten of you. You've each got a planet. You've got a solar system. You then, at the beginning of the game, you vote to who's going to be the, uh, the sort of solar system leader. And you can always, like, you know, revolt if you want. But the idea is it's a team game and you've got solar systems across the universe and everyone's against each other. And it's kind of like a tech race, um, but it's real time. So you will send a ship out or a fleet to attack. It's purely tech space, but the beauty of it is it's just you know, massively multiplayer. Um, I'd love to do something like that with, like, uh, I, I mean, I'm no good at network code, but I'm good at... Uh, that sounds awesome. It is. It, honestly, if you ever played it, you'd be like, wow, it's quite simple to pick up. Uh, and it's so cool. And it's, But it's one of those games where you have to be up like at three in the morning and someone texts you and goes, you've got incoming. And you're like, oh, for God's sake. But everyone's like helping each other out. So it's a nice team game if you've got no life. Um, it's a bit like Daisy, I suppose. But text-based. Anyway, I'd love to do something like that with Godot um, using databases. I don't think you. I don't think you necessarily always need to use networking code for that sort of thing. But uh, well, networking code's much better for real time, right? Um, but yeah, I'd like to get into networking. So, what's your? Uh, what's the purpose of your networking library? What's uh, what's problem is it going to solve? Why can't you just use someone else's networking library, for example? with the music. Oh, of course, the game's still running. I'm in the left. That's the left music. <laughs> Get out of that it's gonna lift. go fast. I've reached 1,000 megabytes a second bandwidth. Holy cow. Plus, I just wanted to do it to learn. Oh, that's that's good. Learning is fun. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that's why I'm doing this. Uh, I'm not expecting to win any awards or sell any games anytime soon. But, uh, yeah, it's all about the learning. Totally. Well, right now, I want to be creating some kind of pathing algorithm for my NPCs. And um, I want to try and get get an NPC to walk through a bloody door. That's my goal. Asterisk. A asterisk. Got to throw in the basic things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I got some pretty basic things to throw in here. A star. Oh, A star. <laughs> what is that? An A star for me? Dijkstra. Dijkstra. You've you've lost me there. Let me, let me just Google that. Dijkstra. Finding algorithms. Oh right. Oh, oh yeah yeah yeah. This A, A star. man. Yeah 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 yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, Dijkstra algorithm. Yeah, cool. It's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. So it's it's the most efficient uh, route. 
Yeah. This is the sort of thing I need, actually. Which one's... Uh, I don't need anything too complicated because I've got a simple network just like that. Um, Dextrous algorithm. Let me be stripped to the main screen there. Yeah, so I've got a pretty much a similar system to this. Although there's no distance between them. Maybe there should be. Maybe I should define a distance. Dextra is the simplest one. Right. Let's have a look. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> It's also the worst performing, but marginally so. For yeah. small graphs, there's no problem. That's exactly what I'm after, yeah. I've got, you know, the simplest little. At the moment, I've got, like, four rooms. Maybe I'll end up with, like, 20 if uh, it gets huge. That's brilliant. Honestly, I can't wait to have something like this working. I am going to get some serious satisfaction from it. That's optimization, blah, blah, blah. Let me see. Uh, let's look for a Dijkstra tutorial. How do you know about this already? Have you written one before? Introduction. Sounds good. I've tried to. I've never had a need. I'll show you my last game. Uh, but then I ended up messing something up and it didn't work. <laughs> I don't even I can't remember where my last School game is. School caught up with me and I had to leave it. Oh, uh, yeah. That is, real life does that to you, doesn't it? There we go. That's, this is my last game. This is... Um, what do you call it? Um, oh, man. What is it? It's a JavaScript... Uh, what's it called? Phaser. Seen that? So cool. It's actually just amazing. If you're going to write a web game, I have to say, it's so cool. Uh, Canvas and WebGL... Anyway, so here's Mario Pong. Multiplayer as well, but no networking. Clearly taking a little time to load. Try force refresh. Dear. My internet's dying. I've got uh, someone watching Netflix next door. I've got some sort of error on screen, have I? Oh, yeah, seen what is not defined. Oh, it's just died on me suddenly. Well, that was good. Anyway, <laughs> I don't think that's playing anytime soon. That's weird. I've even got like a WordPress symbol up there. Something's gone totally wrong there. I wonder if that's a security issue. Yeah. I think it's because I'm using some sort of uh, external include. No. Yeah. Anyway. I rate the website, my dude. <laughs> what, what website is that? I also rate the pug plan. Oh, <laughs> what jellyhound.co.uk. <laughs> dude, that website's awful. Look at my logo, it's all stretched out. Yeah, this is what I do for a living. I, uh, I do WordPress maintenance. Uh, for my sins. Pug plan. Yeah. Pug plan. I didn't even realize I had a pug plan. Maybe I haven't updated this other page yet. Oh. Pug. Oh, yeah. I got the word pug in there. I need to get that changed. Wait a minute. How did you know about the pug plan? Right, anyway. So. Dijkstra's algorithm. Am I pronouncing that right? Dijkstra? Is the silent is it a silent J, or is it Digstra? I just looked at Pro and saw a pug. Nice. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, yeah. Well, it was called the, the pug package. 
Dijkstra. 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 All right. You are way knowledgeable, I have to say. Let's imagine that each node is a city and each edge is an existing road between two cities. This means you can drive from A to B directly. However, you can't drive from A to D. This is no road. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now every road is equal. Some of them are longer. So uh, in order to use this correctly, see, I don't even need to do that. I don't, I, I'm not worried about efficiency um, of the length of the path. I'm only worried about like going from C to E. So I don't even need to. I don't even need to worry about this stuff. All I'm doing is counting the number of uh, of hops. So if I want to go to A to E, my quickest route is to go A B E. Um, Just leave them at one. Okay, fair enough. I'm just wondering if there's an even simpler algorithm. But actually, so you probably want a depth first search. Yeah. Well, actually, maybe or it makes sense first to search. It might make sense to actually have a uh, a length because some of the uh, locations that I'm portraying are um, what is the weight of the shortest path between C and E? C and E, seven eight seven eight nine. That would be C B E. Uh, what CBE seven eight I've clearly not read it right take seven hours to traverse C B and only four hours to traverse to traverse C A B. These times are weights of the paths for the weight of paths are some of the C weights of the edge that contains C A B E oh so it is, yeah. Oh, Christ, I didn't even look. I'm like, I'm literally looking at, uh, yeah, I'm not actually using the algorithm. So it's five. Cool. All right. This is cool. I like this site. What's it? Coding game. Oh, right. Yeah. I've used this before a while ago. It's all right. Little coding competitions. So, Dijkstra's algorithm allows you to calculate the shortest path between one node. You pick which one, every other node in the graph. Wow, my internet is crawling. Uh, during the algorithm execution, we'll mark every node with its minimum distance to node C. Ooh, Jesus. Okay. Why does it start being infinity? It's just an assumption. Well, I have a current node. Initially set it to C, I selected node. Okay, let me mark the node with the red dot. Now we check the neighbors of our current node, A, B, D, in no specific order. So in my case, I'm looking at the exits. Um, So we mark those mark it as visited. To represent the visited nodes with a green check mark. I pick a new node. All right, I can see what you mean by inefficient. If you had a huge network, that's just like working out every move in chess. But sure it would work. Okay, so basically we're jumping onto each node, we're checking all the exits, we're working out what leads where and how quickly it's going to get us there. Um, almost there. So we need to check E. 4 plus 1 equals 5, which is less than E's minimum distance 9. So we leave the 5. An asterisk is Digstra with optimizations, a heuristic, which is a tick assumption. <sighs> oh, man, you're speaking a different language for me there. I have heard of Ace there. Um, because... Uh, when I was doing Unity, I think they had a built-in library for it, right? 
Uh, well, maybe not. I don't know, but they definitely had something that, for pathfinding with using the Easter. Um, cool. What is a BTEC assumption? <laughs> I'm not getting good results here. I'm not interested in a job. So we only need to check E four plus one, but okay, yeah. E doesn't have any non-visited neighbors, so we need to check anything. We mark it as visited. Okay, boom. As there are not unvisited nodes, we're done. The minimum distance of each node is now actually represents the minimum distance from that node to node C. Uh, three, four. Cool, all right. So, how does it actually work out which route it's going to take then? What, did, what do we get from this? Or how do we store the path? Run. What's that going to do? Oh, okay. Uh, the shown function should select a new current node, so fix it so it does so correctly. All right, Python, eh? Okay. Let's do this. So, step two set the non visited node with the smallest current distance as the current node C. For the, set the non visited node. Visited is a set that contains a number of nodes marked as visited. Current distance is a dictionary that contains a set. I mean, I don't know any Python code. Um, but I'll have a guess. So... Is that the node that should be set as the current node? Fix it so it, sh so it picks Welcome the back. correct node. Welcome back. I'm still looking at this code. Set to the non-visited node with the smallest current distance as the current node C. The smallest current distance. So we want to loop through uh, current distances and find the smallest value. Which in this case is going to be a. Right, which would be the next one? Cool, okay. Well, I've still got a step before I go onto this, so I'm going to come back to this. This is awesome. Good spot. <laughs> so at the moment, I want to try a move. My first step is just having an actual character step through a door so in the last session I found an exit study for player AI so I passed in a target location and I moved through it although if we're going to use a pathing algorithm I suppose we'll still need this because we'll want to step through from one place to the next so we would we would store a uh, an array of locations so this would be a 
function. So if we do a try move, we're testing to make sure the location exists. Then we look loop through the exits for the given location. Make sure the object is of type exit. Uh, make sure the target location is set. Make sure the target location, oh, test to see if the target location matches the target location passed into the try move method and if we found it at the moment all we're doing is printing it out uh, so we set target exit so if target exit not equal to null success equals true so now we got to move the guy through it so at this point if we found the exit we've now got to move the player so i mean the npc so we want to move oops we want to move the npc triggering any uh, audio uh, now now the audio that's triggered depends on where the player is so if moving so we've got to, well first of all let's just move the NPC so we have got a script for moving a player but I don't think it's going to be I think it's going to be uh, useful here because that's all about the player and it's just because it's audio based it's subjective use exit exit is it the first time if not yeah so that's playing some audio it saves the previous location, updates the current location. So this is all working okay with our NPC. Uh, get the final node for the target location. We'll take the player two. Then we get a link to the audio controller. Uh, at some point, we want to update the audio controller's reverb based on the size of the room. Then we are playing the transition audio. Now this is where it gets a bit weird because this is in relation to the player. But if our NPC is moving around, we might not do that because we don't want to hear every NPC moving through a door elsewhere in the map. We only want to hear them if they're localized to the player. But that could work as long as we do a check to see if it's localized. Play the exit audio. We don't want that at all. This is the first time visited. We don't want that either. We might, actually. Uh, then we say that the location is visited. We don't need that. And then play the leaving location audio. So we might want that if the NPC is in the same room as the player. Play the arriving at target location audio if the target is the same place as the player. So some of this is relevant. And this is part of the player object. So I kind of want like a hybrid version of this this code here. Um, try move. So I think I'm going to create a new function called move. So we'll try the move first. I don't want to put make this uh, too heavy. And. Obviously, this isn't going to work very well at the moment. So, uh, target location is currently still a string. So, we're going to update, update our position. So, previous location and current location. Current location, previous location. Yep. Yeah. And we've also got time arrived. We need to update that as well for the NPC. So, previous location equals current location. Current location should equal um, that's a node path. I don't know if I want to be using that. It's current location. Current location is also a node path, so that's fine. Um, so, what actually we're saying here is well what are we passing into our player object 
passing in an actual exit object. Oh, oh yeah, okay. And we're actually, we're targeting an exit here, so that makes sense. So it's the same function, right? Uh, so I'm just going to pass in exit. So um, move NPC through a given exit, uh, irrespective of the player's location, right? We've got to make sure um, we check the player's current location here. So, okay, so that's all going to work. Get the final node main, the target location, one to the player two. Uh, get a link to the audio controller. Great. It's all working, I think. Uh, we really don't want to change any of the reverb here because we do that for the player anyway. Um, if target location background audio not equal to null. So we don't need that. That's fading in our audio controller. So we don't need any of that at the moment because that's handled by the player object. Play the exit audio. Right, so now we've got to check where the player is. So uh, have we got a link to the player here? Of course we don't. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Ugh. This is where my OOP skills fail me. Really, an NPC and a player should inherit from some kind of character class. And in my case, they don't. Um... suppose I'm going to do an on ready var player and just pull the player object from the tree. Where is it? Uh, get tree, get currency, and get node player, right? It's only ever going to be one player. And I think that should allow me to access it. All right, so, right, so player has a current location as well. So we want to be checking to see if the target location or the new current location, the exit. Oh, right, okay, yeah, no, we want, to, we want to be seeing if the previous location is the player's. So, okay, so we want to check if previous location is player's current location. If so, play the exit audio, right? That's the footsteps leaving or the, the NPC getting in the lift or whatever they're doing. Uh, then we want to check if the current location is the player's current location. If so, play the arrival audio. That means the NPC has arrived. We don't need is first. And... If exit, so we want to check if there is any exit audio. Some of our locations might not need it. Um, audio timer one. The other thing is, um, like, we might, might want a custom sound for our NPC. I mean, we've got, like, characters that wear high heels. Well, not, but maybe, potentially. And... So everyone's going to have the same footsteps and the same exit and arrival audio as the um, the player. So actually, we need uh, our exit and arrival audio need to be lists based on the player that's moving. So we're going to have to update our audio objects for um, so I'm going to have to do that. So update uh, arrival. Which should be pretty easy because it's just at the moment it's a uh, it's just a type. So update arrival audio to allow for different sounds based on player or NPC or big monster, for example. Okay. So oh man, I hope this works. It'd be great if Graham walks in and I hear him walk in. I'm going to be stoked. Right. Um, 
just getting him to walk through a door. I'll be happy. All right, so let's check if the previous location is current player's current location. So if player dot current location equals previous location, I think that should be it. Double equals. And then as long as we've got an audio, play exit audio. So yeah, so that means the player is the NPC is leaving. Um, we're also going to need to move the actual player object in the tree to a different location, uh, which we've done actually just by doing that. So we need to update the GUI once this is done. Uh, what's our function for update GUI? Update GUI? Do we? Uh, what's that? Object. Get tree, get current scene. What? How on earth is that working? Wouldn't that just be... Oh, okay, so yeah, right. So it's just game. It's a game script. So I want to be doing that at the end, regardless, right? Maybe. Oh, shit. Oh, no. You know what? And the update GUI has got like fades and all sorts of stuff in. So I'm going to need a separate, I'm going to need like a refresh buttons function or something in game. Anyway, I'll, I'll tackle that next. So, um, cool. So check if the current location, blah, 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 blah. So let's get a rid of this because there's going to be no narration. Uh, we don't care if that visit They've visited the location before. Uh, play the current, the leaving current audio occasion. We also need to make sure that this audio doesn't clash with something else. Um, play the, the leaving current audio location. Why have I got a timeout for that? Oh, of course. So what I'm doing there is I'm waiting for the waiting for the player to leave before I allow the player to arrive. I don't need to do that here. Um, so I just need that. And now I'm just checking to see if the current location of the player is the current location of the NPC. Super. And then as long as it's set, we play it. All right. Um, don't need an audio timer anymore. That's it. Right. Chance of this working. Slim to none. Let's see what happens. So we pass in a target exit. All right. So straight away, as soon as we hit play, our... Uh, all our characters are going to try and move into the study, but only our AI should do it. And we should get the leaving audio. Instant crash. Invalid get index target location. So I'm not passing in a valid uh, object here. Uh, exit. Target exit. Target exit is a node path. That's not right. Okay, so I need to get the object for that node path. I've set up a script for that in G global. Uh, nope, it's not in G global. Where is it? Uh, why wouldn't it be? It's not a player, is it? Oh, God damn it, it is, isn't it? Why would I put these in player? This should be accessible from global. Oh, of course, right. These are all, all player-based functions. Um, oh, 
God, this is bad. But I'm gonna just shut them in here for now. So I'm reading this Ooh. contributor's thing. Uh huh. Yeah. Crap myself there. <laughs> I turned that thing off. How do? How do? How would you contribute? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Oh, well, you're more than welcome. Um, I suppose, really, we're looking at an area that you can contribute in, which would be code, but an area of the game. Um, you know, you probably wouldn't want to code alongside me just because my code's absolute garbage, but you'd be more than welcome. I mean, I'm learning from uh, a lot of people that are so much better than me. So it's uh, it's certainly nice to. I've got this other guy, One Bit Godot, who's sent in a bit of code um, for cutscenes. I'm not going to use it because I can barely barely understand how it works, let alone implement it this in the system. This seems like a good way to learn Godot. What contributing to a project? Yeah, absolutely. And it seems like a cool premise. Thanks. Yeah, there's a, a an author, Steph. Um, and she's created uh, a lot of stuff like, look, check this out. So this is what she just recorded the other day. I'll just, uh, oh, you know what? I can't play it because it's going to break. I'll just set it playing on there. Uh, on here, hang on. Check this out. So I'd be more than on board with contributing. Cool. All right. Well, look, let me think of, uh, of what you could do. Um, I, don't wanna, I don't want you to rob me of my pathfinding um <laughs> i really want to have a go at that um there's so much stuff like look let me just give you the lowdown on the project so you got an idea what we got here so uh first of all the approach i'm taking is that um later on we could you know you could we could make a different game out of it right um so the way it's put together is we've got locations so you can navigate between all these locations Right, and then any any given location, there are exits, and the exits lead to other locations, right? And over here, we can see whether the location is on or off, what the text is, uh, where it takes you, and what exit audio is created or arrival audio when the player moves. It's like an the idea was it was an, it's supposed to be like an audio based engine. Um, so we're not creating a, a visual novel, we're creating an audio novel. Um, but actually, it gives us scope for much more. We could create full RPG aspects to it. I don't know if you fancy doing something like that, bringing in an RPG sort of um, statistical combat system to the game would be pretty cool. Um, so at the moment, Steph is uh, writing the script. So she's written loads of background. Um, so we've got this um, Google Drive uh, audio. So we've got a ton of scripts and stuff so she's going and casting and we've got um not everyone's not everyone's contributed yet recordings ludovin recording so she's recording like a lot of the script so this is like this is like for a news so she's talking about like uh, the shit going on back on Earth, whereas our player is located on Europa in orbit around Jupiter. Um, and the premise is that you wake up in your bed as the player. In fact, actually, sorry, it starts off 15 or 20 years ago when your dad gets killed uh, trying to get back to Earth from Europa on a standard trip. Uh, and then fast forward 20 years later, you're a bit disturbed from like basically being an angry teenager and saying, fuck off, dad, you're leaving me. And um, then uh, he gets a little signal on his PDA and it's his dad, but it's like distorted and he's like, what the hell? And it's like, you need to read this message. Um, and I don't know any more than that. She's not like unveiled the full plot yet. But uh, so she's developing this sort of um, sci-fi story and so we're kind of, kind of facilitating with code um, the ability to create that story. And then we get to have fun as we do it by bolting on whatever the hell we want to bolt on, like RPG aspects or 
combat or whatever. So some of the things she so she's giving me this list of stuff. I want so the latest is she wants multiple TV channels. Uh, she wants like the player to sort of comment on the TV channels as they're playing. She wants some sort of personal device. So we, we're going to revamp the user interface so that most of the game is controlled through some kind of PD or PDA. Um, we need a way to queue dialogue, blah, 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 blah. Um, we've got, we've implemented dialogue designer. I don't know if you've seen that. I don't know if you know, I can't, I can't log in at the moment. I'm logged out of steam, but it's uh, that, which is a, a, a dialogue script system, which actually I'd like to scrap and rewrite from scratch. So there's a opportunity. Um, dialogue designer. In fact, actually, what's better, um, Inkle. I looked at loads of different um, different dialogue systems, but what we need is uh, a dialogue, a, a pre writ I mean, not a pre-written some system, a bespoke system for dialogue in which we can sort of append to. Uh, dialogue design is nice, but it's just the JSON it creates is hideous and the format doesn't allow for any sort of customization. Um, so I'd like to support like some sort of open source um, system for dialogue, like Inkelwriter, for example, uh, where it's a documented system. This is how it works. You can bolt onto it. Um, and that's just purely for dialogue, right? So one character says this, then you've got the choice to say this, this, or this, and so on. But we want to have audio attached to it. Um, so Inkel could do it, and there's a few others. I've got a... Uh, an episode where I talk about that. So that's one. Another, well, that's two things you could you could look at. Um, what else have we got? Um, so she's creating all the puzzles relating to objects. So I'm creating a sort of system for. Uh, I've got like a scripting system for interaction. So like, we can change verbs for objects how you interact with them. You can add verbs, remove verbs, kind of like a point and click adventure game without the pointing and clicking. I'm still pointing and clicking, but without moving a character around the screen, it's all audio based. So now we've got character scripts for interaction with characters, cut scenes. So I've got a- Honestly, it all seems really cool and something that I would want to take a stab at. Cool. And also we've got a, a repo. So uh, I can set you up on the repo. And I have to go to sleep RN though. Ah, uh, no worries. <laughs> well, um, ping me Is an email. Is getting tired? Yeah, sure. Ping me an email. I'll, uh, what are you on? You're on Twitch. I will add you on Twitch, my friend. And, uh, and I'll send you my email address. What's your email? I'm going to, I'm going to Twitch it to you. Have you, have you accepted my... Uh... at gmail.com Oh, right. You know that's live on stream. <laughs> Look at all those spammers that watch this channel. They'll be taking that and sending you who knows what. You know that's live on stream. God, I'm watching the stream. Cool. All right. Nice. I've taken note. Oh, well. <laughs> I've taken note and I'll, uh, I'll ping you an email, man. Cool. All right. Well, look, have a good night. Have it's a good sleep. It's my secondary email anyway. Awesome. Nice. It's um, not my primary one. If you want to join me, so we've got a Discord channel as well, so I'll send you the link. And, uh, yeah, you can join us on Discord and we can, we can code together, man. It'd be too. awesome. All right, dude. Take it easy. Have a good night. Um, so let's add... For now, seeing as this Thanks. Endor Rifters, see ya. See ya. Uh, Endor Rifters email address is public. Uh, we will send make a little note to contact Ender to join us on the coding team. Cool. All right. Nice. Night, dude. That's all I'm about to do. All right. Let's get our guy walking through a door. So. Um, Target location doesn't exist at the moment. So we need to get the current node. We were going to cheat and do something very bad by copying all these 
scripts here and just sticking them in the character. Um, what we could do is move them into global, but if we did that, and then we're going to have to pass in values, and you know what? This is really very prototype-based, so um, I'm not really fussed at the moment. You know, when we know that the game is actually decent and worth con and worth moving forward with, then we can go and optimize this stuff and make it great. In the meantime, uh, as I said on my little piece of paper, prototype, finish game, optimize, sleep. Uh, it's 10 o'clock, so I'm not going to finish now. I'm going to do another half an hour and try and get this done. So, all right. Um, man, I'm really excited. It'd be great to be working with Ender Rift on this. I wonder what he'll fancy working on. So, let's see. Check schedule done. Um, move. Here we go. So, Exit.target location doesn't work. So what we need to do is go, whoops. What's going to get the current uh, target location? And why isn't that working? Why is that working on player? And not this, because here we're passing in, ah, you know what it is? It's because when we use when we use use exit, we're passing in an object, right? We're not passing in a, a string. Um, I think we've got the option though, right? We don't have to use a string as our target exit. Um, for exit, get current location, get children. So we're actually Yeah, we're setting target location here. We don't need to do that, right? Why am I doing that? I just want to save the exit. And then pass the exit. That should do it. Easy, right? Hey! Now that noise there was our player. Look, that's our player leaving. So if we go into the study now. There he is! Hey! Blow me down, it worked. Get in. Uh, it'd be great if we can get that sort of sound to fade out as well. Um, so why don't we tween for this this one as well? Um, we also want to mm, we can do it. thinking how complicated it is. There's so many other aspects to this that we need to consider. Uh, at the moment, it's like a big, massive, a massive code with very little control over the aspects of it. So we're going to need to remember to pause our characters during a cutscene. There's all sorts of things we need to do. Um, and then we don't want to hear big, clumpy shoes while the player's doing a narrative. Um, so we need some sort of audio controller. I suppose I don't need to get too far ahead of myself. We've got to build the complexity in. Um, so one problem at a time, break your big problem into lots of little problems and it will solve itself. So uh, our player, our NPC is moving to the target exit. So let's just tween our audio out over the length of the audio. So it ends in... work so will that work yeah we'll have to tween out and tween in based on whether arriving or not 
So actually, maybe we should have a different audio sound rather than play location transition. We go back to our audio controller. Play location transition. So here we go. So that's our function for it. Um, so we could create a, a new, a new, um, my goodness, my brain stopped working. A new parameter here. At the moment, all this does is just play a sound that you pass in, but it's specific to a location transition. So why don't we have a fade uh, equals null. Yeah. And then if fade is set to in or out, then we're going to tween that audio. So let's open up our audio controller script uh, scene. So we've got a tween in and tween out. I don't know why. Can we just have a tween? They're just tweeners. Oh, maybe it's because they work uh, in parallel. Okay, so I'm just going to have a NPC tween. What? Oh. Tween and uh, NPC tween. Thing is, will that actually work if um, there's a load of a load of people trumping in? Let's see, alternative to tween, sorry, code alternative to tween in Godot. The only thing about code alternatives to tweens mean, so look, Godot's tweens are terrible. Oh no, that's making tweens more Is that we have to put our tween in the process loop, right? So we're constantly calling the process to check whether they need to like change the you know, we're, we're looping from one value to the next. Now, this is a better way to do it. We need to create a tween object. Well, I don't understand, like, like I see this stuff all the time, but do, do they ever delete the tween objects after they're done? Anyway, this is the way to do it. We should, whenever we do a tween, why on earth would we, like, rely on having something in the in the scene, why would we not just create it programmatically so that we can have as many as we like for each audio play, and then when the tween finishes, destroy itself? That's got to be the way to do it. So we shall, so we get to the play here. Now, OK, so there's a couple of things we need to do. First of all, we need to check if uh, fade equals in, and it's fade dot, is it lower? I'm going to remember, is it lower? Whoops, give me a lower. Two underscore lower. Um, Right, so if fade is set to in, then that means our volume has got to start at zero. So we're going to have to set the stream object. Um, uh, might this mess with our transition audio for the player, though? Maybe we should just have a... Yeah, we probably want an, a completely new NPC audio player. We don't really need to do a, a location transition. Remember, for our player, a location transition mean, means uh, we have audio at location one and audio at location two, and we crossfade the audio to make it feel like you're moving from one environment to the next. 
with a NPC, we only need to play the audio in that given location. We've got a sound effects player for that. Uh, we don't even need to use this play location transition. We could just create a streaming device, play the audio, and then delete it afterwards. So why don't we create a new function here just for our lovely, um, so we don't need that. We don't need, we'll keep that just in case. And we'll keep this, but we'll probably use it again in a sec anyway. Right, okay, so this is gonna be uh, play NPC uh, transition. Okay, and then sound to load. And fade equals, no, oh, right, kill. Okay, so here we're going to, um, let's just do a little bit of pseudo code here. We wanna add a, a stream player to, to the audio controller. We want to add, uh, maybe add a tween based on fade condition in out. And then we want to uh, delete stream player and tween on signal complete. Yeah. Okay, well, that could take me a few hours. <laughs> let's just see if we can do this. So, let's look at our current location stuff. So we can use all this. So basically we're creating a new file, we're opening a path to it, we're buffering it. Uh, The only thing we haven't got here is this, the audio player, the uh, stream player, so, whoops. So we can use all of that. So first thing we wanna do is load the sound. Boom. Okay, sound loaded. Okay, now we wanna add a stream player, so, it's going to be a like this, presumably. So if our, um, we'll call it stream player equals a new what? Uh, audio stream player. Happy days. Okay. Now we need to add the audio stream player to the tree. I think. Do I need to? Does it matter? Will the stream player still play regardless of whether it's in the in the tree or not? Let's not add it to the tree. Oh no. I don't know if signals will work if it's not in the tree. I don't know. I don't add this, but then I'm just creating a I'm just creating a class of stream here and then passing it to something that's in the tree. Let me just check the old googly. Yo googly, Godot, do I need to add every object to the tree? See an organization. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Loose coupling. I have not done that very well. I can never get this working for some reason. I don't know why. Okay. I suppose, is it all about scope? 
because if I don't need any scope, then I don't need to add it to the tree. Anyway, I mean, it's easy enough to add it to the tree if I wanted to, right? We'll try adding it, and then we'll just try turning that off afterwards and see if it makes any difference. So add child stream player. So now we've added it. Then we want to set that to uh, play. So let's just go down here. So that's this. So uh, so stream player dot stream equals stream and stream player dot play. Super duper. So that should play. Uh, I should probably test that before I start working on the rest. So comment that out. Play MPC transition. Let's go back to our character script. I'm going to replace that. Cool. Right. Let's see if we still get footsteps. We do. So the player just left. And so that's good. And now we'll probably find that we've got this dodgy uh, object sitting about. Is it G? No, that's our global. Game. Hello. <gasps> oh my god, you star. Thank you very much. Oh, oh my god, I just need this right now. A nice cold little, little bit of this stream is sponsored by, actually it's not sponsored by anyone, but Zero Sugar Fanta. Oh my god. Mm -mm -mm. Um, Fanta, if you're watching, that'll be uh, $20,000. That's all I need to just finish this prototype off. Quick work for a few days, or weeks, months. Right, okay. So I can't see it. Does that mean once it finished playing, it destroyed itself? I definitely added it to the tree. If I kill it, and then just start again. See, I didn't see anything suddenly disappear or add itself there. Isn't that weird? Oh. Would have added itself to audio controller. There it is. There it is. I think. Yeah. So if I replay that and dig in there real quick. Ah, not quick enough. You know what? Let's just put a breakpoint in here. Oops, it's not that. We'll put a breakpoint in here. Play again. Go into remote. Oh, so it doesn't. It hasn't appeared yet. And then we step in. Step through. Step over. No, oh, that's interesting. So it's created it. Um, and it's played it, but we don't see anything in the stream there, which is a bit weird. If I, no, it's definitely doing that. I have no idea why that's happening. It's pretty cool, but one thing's for sure, it ain't deleting the object afterwards. So that's, we wouldn't want, like, I mean, presumably then, if we kept doing that, we'd end up with hundreds of stream players, uh, audio stream players. So we need to delete it. But before I do that, let's do the test. Let's see if um, in our audio controller, whether we needed to add it to the scene or not. Um, so if I do that and play now and turn off my debug. Okay, yeah. So if it ain't in the scene, it ain't being heard. Probably isn't processing. Probably need to add it to the tree in order for it to process. Oh my god. Sorry, I hate it when people eat and drink on stream, but I am so thirsty. I need to move my mic away. Don't hear me.
still looking. Okay, so uh, back to the audio controller. Turn that back on. So now we need a signal to check if stream player's finished. How the heck do we do that? Um, so, uh, Godot object deletes itself when complete, for example. So Q3 is what we need. So I'll stick that in there. Oh, it's stream player. Q3, presumably. Um, but now that the signal. Um, okay, that's no good. Signal. Oops. Signal. I mean, I've got the idea of signals, but I'm just not sure how to do this on a um, from within within here. Uh, let's see. Let's just see some of my emit signal code that we've used before. Uh, specifically, custom stuff like this. For some reason. Like, I can never get these to fit to work if I stick them inside the code. I'm actually checking for an event in stream player. How do I do that? Uh, I have to use connect, right? So, check uh, Godot. Check for signal from instance. Hmm. This is exactly what we want, right? The bullet creates itself, fires over, and then it, it signals to itself when it should delete itself. Emit signal, shoot. <clears throat> so the player emits the signal then connect the player's signal appear in the node tab Really? Oh, cool, okay. So if I just go like this then. Emit signal. I'm not going to use any of this stuff, right? Emit signal. Uh, MPC transition complete. I need to put a delay on that based on when the stream player is finished, but do I now see that here? Nope. Oh, I need to define a signal at the beginning. So, but then surely if that worked, I should see these as well. I ain't seeing none of that up here. Aha! There it is. Okay. So, I can just do a yield, right? For the 
length. Uh, so if I look for play location transition, I believe that's in player, is it? go audio timer so that sets it and then we yield based on the timer so I want to do the same thing with this function here except I want to I don't want to time out oh sorry I don't want to return the length I just want to yield and then emit the signal Hopefully that's going to work with multiple instances. Should do. So, audio timer one is the length of my stream here. Um, if I look down here, we can see that stream dot get length. So all we need to do is pass in that. I don't know why I did it the other way, to be honest. Right. So it loads the object up. It loads the sound up, it then plays the sound, it then waits. Oop. I can't do that, right? Wait, why even emit the signal? I'll just delete it after the yield, right? <clears throat> that should be it. Let's just do that, just in case it glitches a bit. Um, right, let's try that. Hey, perfect. All right. So if I have two characters there, so um, let's do this. So in our event controller script, we're gonna we're gonna wait for ten seconds. And then we're gonna do the character move. We're gonna wait another twenty seconds, and then we're gonna move the character back into the. Uh, no, we're gonna wait for another five seconds, and then move the character back into the living area. Okay, let's just wait for five seconds. Right, okay, so uh, why am I doing that? I want to see, first of all, whether that works. Second of all, I want to reduce that timeout. So, character's going to move out. Now. Nope. Hmm. Wait, how long is a timer? Oh my god! Ah! Whoa! -ho! Ho, ho ho! Okay. Whew. Oh, we always love those moments. Man. That was dramatic. That's my Zelda sound effects I've got lined up. I don't know why. I've got, uh. Just in case anyone sort of, uh. shouts at me on the stream. I can then. Tell Navi to just shut up. Hey, hey, listen. Right, so what the hell happened there? <laughs> Pretty interesting stuff. Let's try setting this to one, first of all, and then just move. Is it something to do with my audio transition? That was crazy. Well, that worked okay, right? So now AI's in the study, right? Cool. What about if we now go into the study before AI follows us? Oh, AI beat us here. Jeez, let's change the timeout to two. Ha! There they are. That's cool. I didn't need to update the GUI, it just worked. That's pretty awesome. I have no idea how. Oh no, it, oh, so the update did work then. I have got a GUI update. Um, 
So, what's wrong with that then? So, character leaves. Bye. Jeez. Is it Graham? Is Graham coming in? Oh, right, of course. What's happening there is it's getting confused with the characters. Because this is moving every single character, right? Um, we haven't actually checked to see where the characters are. So what's happening is we're moving every, every character back into the living area, I believe. Why that would cause that to happen, I'm not sure. Um, that big splurge. I would have thought just all the characters would end up in the living area. So at the moment, Jove is in the... Where is Jove? Jove is in R&D. Great, he's out of the way. Graham is on the balcony with the candlestick. And the AI is in the living area with the gun. So let's move... Graham, sorry Graham. I'm sticking you in R&D. Where you belong. God damn it. There we go. Now, we've just got the AI. Just you and me, pal. Now, go to the study and then come back. Come on. Off he goes. Ah! I wonder what's going on there. It's like the update GUI function's just gone nuts. Okay. Hmm. What if we just start the AI in the uh, study and then just move the AI into the living area? Is this something to do with something else? I'm wondering if it's my function or I don't know what it, what it could be. All right. Nope. That worked, although we didn't hear the AI come in. We should at least get the old footsteps. So I don't know why the um, audio is not working for that. Okay, one problem at a time. So it's now half ten. What do we want to achieve in the next few minutes so we can make a commit? Uh, well, at least we've got our character moving. Let's try and fix the audio first of all for arrival. So maybe this yield is a really bad idea. I don't know. See anything wrong with it? sure it will become apparent soon okay so then pc transition sound to load blah 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 okay we haven't done the tweening yet let's go back into character so this isn't working if the current location equals the npc's new current location then play the Arrival audio. So I'm going to put uh, a. Oh, why can't I put a. There we go. Put a debug on that. Now this should this should trigger here when the AI comes in. Boom. Alright, good. So let's just check. So. Player.current location is um, living area, uh, node path, and our current location is. Wait, is that just player current location? 
right, okay, so there we go. So player current location, this living area, and our current location. So it should go into this step. And it does. Um, we have got X arrival audio, so it should step. And now it should play this. So we're going to step into this. Play on PC transition. Okay. Oh. We're missing arrival audio stream for some reason. Okay. Let's kill our debug. Why do we think that is? So exit arrival audio is missing. You know what? Let's debug it again. Just have a look at our object here. I'm still getting used to the inspector here. It's nice. I've seen better inspectors. It's, it's nice. Okay. So here we are. I think what I want to do is just bit it out of watch. Alright, let's exit. Exit. Let's open that up. And arrival audio. Oh, it's empty. Why is that? I would explain a lot. So our study. Exit. Has no arrival audio. Well, there we go. Let's change it to fo footsteps into metal. All right, here we go. So now we should get the NPC arriving. Oops. And break point off and continue. And our AI arrives in her high heels. Nice. Okay, that's pretty cool. I am happy with that. So I can only imagine... Wow, that audio is getting a little bit much, isn't it? Let's just skip a track. How about some Dead Soul? Uh, no, where is it? Um... Here it is. Nope. There we go. Radiation. Okay. I've got a load of friends that do music. I should contact them and get a load of back catalogue. Just fed up with uh, YouTube slapping a copyright claim. Not that it matters. I think copyright claim seems to just sort of demonetize your your channel, and I have no intention of monetizing my channel. But um, I can't help but think maybe that impacts the views or something. Not that I get that many views, but still. Um. Okay, so why can't I have a another timer here? And then move the character back into the study. So we're doing it the other way now, right? Rather move them out and in, we're moving them in and out. Same problem? Let's see. Here she comes. Boom. Okay, so let's put a breakpoint here and see what the hell is going on. Did that seem like a. It didn't seem like a five second wait. Wow. Ah. Hmm. 
interesting. Let me just look at the code for uh, my cutscene. Wait, where is the cutscene code? I thought it would be in cutscene, but it's not, is it? Down here, cutscene script, okay. Right, so I've got no sort of. Uh, I have got one there. I'm wondering if there's uh, a problem using many. many timeouts. 100% sure, sure how the yield works. Um, so, stacking timeout yields. Oops. Say, I'm not too keen on yield. This is cool. Um. But wait, oh, I see. We're probably hooking this room placement finish to uh, no, let's just try this. So, we're never going to do it like this anyway, right? I mean, they should never have an instance where we're like moving all the characters and then waiting for a few seconds and doing things. Um, so, it's not a great use case. Let's just try, uh, let's just set something based on uh, the global timer for now, right? Because I never want to be doing that. And why am I still using brackets? So uh, g, uh, g dot earth time <laughs> equals um, We start at 0759. So oh eight oh 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 oh. Then do that, and then if it's oh five, then move it back. Right. Okay. No more dodgy yields. Just plain old checking the time. That's got to work, right? If it doesn't, then the yield wasn't the problem in the first place. Four, three, two, one. Here she comes. Hey! Hey! 
And off she goes. Still playing the leaving audio. Got to look out now for that. So now, if I go to the study, AI, are you there? Hey. She's there. Brilliant. Right. Okay. So happy days. We know our code's working. Obviously, the yield was causing some kind of like crazy, um, crazy stuff happening there. So that's cool. We probably are going to need some kind of signals. So. Great. So we've got our characters moving. Last thing. It's quarter to 11. Jesus. Honestly, time flies when you're having fun. We've now got a fade in or fade out based on a tween. And also, delete the tween. Um, it's going to be the same thing though, right? Uh, so we have still got a yield in our... Hey, I wonder if it's because um, there's multiple timers and they're all just a timer. And then it's, that's the signal that's generated. So one of the other signals gets called and triggers the continuation. And then the, I don't know, perhaps the time is getting triggered multiple times. I don't know, maybe it got caught in some sort of yield infinite loop. Kind of makes sense. Let's kill that. Let's kill this. Let's kill Graham. Not literally Graham. Let's kill uh, game. Kill cutscene. And that's simpler. Okay. So tweening in our audio controller. So if our fade is set, when do we want to start the tween? So we want to check to see if, if uh, fade uh didn't I copy this somewhere? Yeah, here we go. So, uncomment that. Control K. Uh, stream player. So it's stream player. And so when you're setting the decibels, where do you set them? You set them on the stream player. And you can check the value of an object, like just like this. So it's volume underscore DB. So if we're fading in, then the lowest form of volume dB is minus 80 decibels. Uh, is that right? Let's just check here. Yeah, minus 80, kill. Cool. Right, and if we're fading out, then uh, we're starting at normal volume, right? Although that might not be the right volume to have. Maybe we should... Uh, Maybe our transitions should have a different level. Uh, maybe they should be a bit quieter. Why don't we make them sort of minus 20 as a default? And in fact, when we add our stream player, we'll default the volume to minus 20. In fact, let's set here a var called default transition uh, NPC transition volume happy days um, and why don't we export that bad boy so we can just set it from the set it from here cool all right um, Never did get that stuff working in it. I want to get the spatializer working. I still don't know what bus effect is going to get me the reverb, but it's such a tiny problem. Right, default NPC transition, audio. Uh, so instead of saying minus 20, we're going to say that and that. Now, we want to create our tween if any of these conditions are true. So. Uh, if it's in, we're going to tween in. If it's out, we're going to tween out. So, how do we instantiate a tween? Well, we found one here. So, var tween new. Let's create a new tween object. Then we're going to interpolate the property of volume. And uh, trouble is, ah, you know when I last tried to do a tween? I think that was the problem. I didn't. I never added it. Always got to add it to the scene. All right. So we start 
we set the tween up, we add it um, to the tree, and then we start it. So the last thing we need to do is set our interpolation here. Uh, yeah, ditch that, because I'm sure, haven't I done it somewhere else? Let's have a look, search, finding files. Uh, here we go, stream player. Wait, if I'm doing that, then why on earth have I got tween in, tween out? Christ, honestly, this whole thing needs rewritten. Anyway, right, so that's exactly what we want, pretty much. Let's go back up. Uh, okay. There we go. Put that in there. So let's just make sure we've got this right. So we're not tweening in, it's just tween. Delete MPC tween, we use that. And uh, stream player is stream player. Oof, that's not good, is it? Uh, let's call it transition stream player. That's just a little bit close to some of the other values we're using, which are accessible publicly. And Let's make sure we use, get our syntax right here. All right. Okay, so uh, we're gonna tween the object stream player. We're gonna be changing the volume DB from minus 80 to volume. So in our case, uh, that's our normal volume, right? Uh, length. Length would be the length of the stream. So that will be stream.getLength, I think. And audio transition type and all that stuff is probably set already. So I don't think I need to change that. So let's stick that in. The same thing over here. Are we all right to start the tween here? Yeah, it should be. Um, we've not hit play yet, right? Should be all right. Should be, sorry, by the time it hits play, it must be like tiny enough. Right, okay. So, why am I still getting this area here? Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, so now we're doing it the other way around. So we're going from that to minus 80. Fine. All right. And then, of course, we need to delete our tween. All right. Okay, why don't we just set up tween here, regardless of whether we use it or not. And that way, looking for a condition where we don't keep, remove it. All right, here we go. Turn down this so we can hear. Non-existent function to lower and base null. Okay, right. If uh, fade not equal to null and why am I using brackets? Oh, maybe I should use brackets anyway. Called how I want to. Still don't like it. Oh.
Super. All right, here we go. Come on. Fading in. High heels in. Can't tell whether that's fading out or not. Um. Can we replace with a stupid sound? Let's try it. So, uh, we'll go to our game. Changing our study exit noise to be uh, lift change floor. Yeah. So now, she should arrive in the lift. playing the arrival audio for the current location, right? So, um... So she's played... It's playing the, uh... It's playing that. Let's go for lift arrival. Why is it still playing that noise when she's going to the study, right? That's me arriving at the study. Um, let me get this straight. I am in the living area. So I hear her arrive. Oh, still set to footsteps. Well, that'd be why. Okay, still not very good. A good example, is it? Um, what does void mean? Hey, teach you. Void means nothing. It means um, this function here, ready, is doing. It's returning nothing. Um, let's say we have a function that we do want to return something. So. Uh, Let's see a good example here. So we see this one here. Let's return success, which is true or false. So what we can do is we can say, uh, what's true or false? It's a bool, right? So we can say this function returns a bool. And this is like, well, you're not returning a bool here. Well, yeah, I probably should fix this. It helps us, um, like, see that, that's a, perfect example because it's telling us hang on this function is just, it's helping you code um so it's like basically instructing anyone else that uses your function uh that this is what this function should do so if i move my guy i want to return a true or false in this case so if it's void it just means it doesn't need to return anything um, i'm not really using it much i'm only using it uh it's just default code that's getting spit spit out. Probably should use it a bit more. I should be voiding all this stuff. But uh, I am being a bit of a experimental coder okay, here. Okay, thanks. No worries, teach you. No worries. Hey, thanks for uh, watching the stream. Appreciate it. Um. So, where was I? Remind me where I was, teach you. What's it doing? Um. Oh yeah, I was testing out my my arrival audio. So the study. Let's go back for footsteps. So I want a noise that just demonstrates whether or not um, it's sort of fading in or out or not. 
So we're going to try footsteps outdoors. Save that. Hit play. Ignore the heavy breathing. It's just the astronauts outside. There we go. Re Honestly, can't tell whether that's fading in or out. It's way too low. All right. I love this audio. This is so cool. I'm going to bring this in and one scene where we leave the leave the base it's going to be a tense scene anyway um so we need a nice bit of audio it's going to sound better so footsteps out where do we set our audio is it in the audio controller? No. Is it in... Player? No, I don't think so. Global? No. Game script? No. Game? No. Jeez, where is it? Um, exit. There it is. Right, so we're setting all our... our different sounds up here. So let's set up a new sound called... Test. This is the beauty of using these uh, um, I suppose is that a dictionary I think a list of values so now we just need to create a sound in our transition folder uh, transitions and it needs to be something lengthy so let's see if we can create something ourselves shall we just some random noise that we can check to see if it's uh, if it's working or not. So uh, we're going to change our microphone to be our voice mod. Uh, pull up our voice mod. And we're going to switch to robot. Is that working? Yeah, there we go. Right, and now I'm going to make a nice noise for the transition. Yeah. Nah. Okay, let's see if that worked. Yeah. Yeah. Great. That's very annoying. But that's our test track. Okay, so export as OGG. And uh So we're going to go for transitions, transition, and this just becomes test. Easy as that. All right. So now we've got an irritating test noise. Change this to test and this to test and play. And now when the AI arrives, hopefully that should fade in. What? Yeah. Well, oh, that certainly didn't work. <laughs> okay. Um. Is that the way it is? So. No, wait. We're exiting. If you exit the study, it plays this noise as you enter the living room, right? Still playing footsteps. Yeah. There's definitely no tween on the volume there. Um. Why is the tween in? Surely it's not playing this. 
Arrival Audio. If it is, then I've fucked it up. Oops. I'm not hearing anything there. Yeah. Okay, let me start again. <laughs> Go four, three, two, one. Yeah. Yeah. So I've definitely put that up. Yeah. As if to agree with me, she agrees. Okay. So that means that if I'm in the living room and someone comes from the study, it's playing the Exit the study audio. Whereas actually what I want is this, the exit. Yeah, it's playing the previous locations audio. So that's wrong. So let's just look at the audio controller here. Uh, so these should be footsteps, right? I don't care about the sound that someone's making inside the study. All I care about is what the player hears in the living area. So that should be correct. And now in an NPC transition, can anyone spot the problem? Play NPC transition is in the character script. Hmm. I should just play one of these two, right? Ah, but no, because what's happening is the players move through the study. So let's so say so many null checks. Oh, I know, I know. Let's have a look. Where are all my null checks? I got a lot of null checks. <laughs> um, I wonder if that's actually going to work better that way. So let me put the NPC in the lift, and then have a come from the lift to the living area. So I need to put AI into the lift. There you go. Right, AI is now on the lift. So now we should get the ding when they arrive. If it's correct, if it's not correct, we'll get the doors opening. I'm not sure. Let's just see. Here it comes. And we've got nothing. So our target exit, so the exit or uh, the exit arrival audio is based on the NPC's position before they move in. So they were in the elevator living area, which has an living area. Oh, it's got no arrival audio. So that's why. If I put arrival audio in there, why haven't I got arrival audio in there? It's a bloody good question. Oh, of course. Okay. The way I was thinking was that our exit audio plays from our living room so we have our footsteps and then we arrive at the location we don't need anything there because they're at the lift so if I go into the lift right oh oh I played a lift noise there 
So that's based on the exit in the living area, right? So exit lift has footsteps indoor, enter lift. So entering the living area would be, well, there wouldn't be any arrival. Foot, so it would just be more footsteps, right? Um, hmm. I wonder if I just set the doors to open. Is that a ding or something? Let's just go into the lift. Doors shut. And then I go back into the living area. Oh, the AI was in the lift with me. So that's the footsteps walking off. And I go into the living area. Obviously, that's backwards. So the exit was the footsteps, and then the arrival was the lift, which is completely wrong. But it worked for the NPC. Um, okay, I think I've got I've got this. So what we need to do is we need to check the uh, we need to get the exit object relating to the exit object that they came from. We've got an exit object that connects the two. We've got exit enter the living area. Whoop. And we've got an exit uh, in the living area to the left. So these two are connected. I need to establish a, a relationship between the two. Target locations. So I'm looking for the exit has the same target location as the area I'm moving into. Oh man, what a pain in the ass. So, okay, so this one works. Um, wait, is it that one that works? I'm moving the AI, let's get, let's put our experiment back to where we were. It's getting confusing. All right. So our AI is in the left. We're going to move him back into the study. AI is in the study. Hit play. We should hear the error. Here he comes in six, five, four, three, two, ta da. Hello, AI. Okay, and he's away. So we got footsteps in there, and the footsteps in relates to the living area. No, uh, it relates to the study exit audio. Christ, oh my, this is melting my brain. Okay, so um, <laughs> it's an interesting uh, way of doing this. I'm pretty sure that no one's ever tried to do this shit before. Maybe no one would ever want to do this shit. Who knows? <sighs> okay. I'm looking for the easy... Easy hook. I'm thinking it's probably going to be up here. So the, at the moment, I'm passing an exit, which is an object. And that was derived by my try move which we'll be using for the pathfinding later. So we find our target exit, we pass it in. It kind of makes sense that you'd, you'd play the audio that you'd have leaving or arriving from one location. Surely that's correct, the way I'm doing it. So,
uh, yeah, so arrival audio, setting that in the study. That means that I leave the study with footsteps, but the when I'm entering into the living area, I'm making that noise, which I should hear now as a, yeah, it's kind of head, hard to get your head around, but actually I think that's correct. Yeah. Yep, and then in and out. Yeah. All right, cool. I think it's okay. I think that should work. It's just uh, not exactly beautifully straightforward. Okay, so now um, our tweens aren't working. Let's have a look at our tween. What's up, Mr. Tween? So we've got a hook to our property. We want a tween. Volume dB is our target. We're transitioning from minus 80, blah, blah, blah. Stream get length. We'll do a transition type. What's that set to? One sign, which is fine. Okay. Between ease out. What's that last value? To plate. Delay. Zero, fine. Um, if only there was or some way I could uh, monitor that interpolation between um, tween let's have a look at the methods we've got here follow method follow property that Follows the property of implies it. Beginning from initial value definition. Uh, uh, get runtime turns the total time needed for tweens to end. Uh, um, is active. Reset. Resume. Seek. Set active. Start. Stop. Don't seem to have much luck with tweens. Um, It's, it's so much harder to like see what's going on the audio side of things with that so maybe if i just hook it up for a, a visual property first is it from two must be uh, where is it Why doesn't that work all the time? Control left click. There we go. Because it was already open. Uh, initial value, final value. Yeah. Duration, float, trans time. What's the duration? Uh, oops. Duration is seconds. And stream length. So also in seconds, maybe it's the length of my, my stream is wrong. Okay, not finding any function for that. Uh, let's just check it on old Google, Godot, stream dot length. Get length of audio in seconds. Okay. Um, I'm assuming it's seconds. I don't want to make an assumption here. Get length. Get length. Returns the length theory in seconds. Yeah. Okay. So it's probably not that then. Create a new instance of a tween. Off we go. We add the child. We start the tween. If 
think that's the reason why I ended up using bloody tweens in the scene tree rather than programmatic tweens because I wasn't sure what was going on. It seemed to work when I when I used this uh, when I used tween out and tween in. Oh, God's sake! Man, twenty past eleven. Really going for it here. I'm getting that exhaustion sweat. Um. Okay. Just want to fix this problem, and then I can commit. So, how the hell can I debug this if I can't cycle through the tween? Um, I know, I know, I think. Uh, can we set up a inspector here and then in process, print the object out. I don't know if we can actually do it at all, but uh, so that's going to print it out constantly and then point our inspector at the tween object. Uh, inspector equals tween. Will that work? And then if we put a breakpoint here, breakpoint, okay. Oh man, we've got a lot of breakpoints. Um, okay, we'll set inspector to null. And if inspector not equal to null, I love my nulls. Uh, <laughs> then we hit the the break point. Boom. Okay. Right. Whoop, Mr. Mr. Colon. And oh, so we get this when we haven't stopped the uh, game and we try and save. Okay, play. All right, so it's going to should pause the moment someone comes in. Now. Yeah. Okay. Well, that yeah. didn't work. Hmm. So inspector never gets set for some reason. Does that mean it's never getting in here? Oh, you flipping idiot. That's so obvious. I'm not using the fade. Oh man. Play MPC transition. Oh God's sake. How long did I spend on that? I'm not even passing in the fade value. Oh, so if previously I could go to play the exit audio. So that means the player is leaving, therefore we're passing it out. And this is the player coming in, right? I'm the MPC. There we go. Don't need any of this inspector crap. And get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And pass. Boom. All right, here we go. Now we should fade in with a. Hello. Hey. Bye bye. Right. Okay. Cool. Might be a little bit quick, but I think that's good enough. Um. So that means we can now get rid of that awful test sound. Switch it to footsteps for our study. Footsteps. 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 Now we should have steps as our AI enters the room and steps as our AI leaves the room. <sighs> Thank goodness for that. Could you please have a look on a code snippet and tell me your opinion about the code? Holy shit, dude. 
You been on since nine. Devoted. Thanks, man. <laughs> hey, whiskey trails. What's that teach you? Could you please have a look on a code snippet and tell me a pin? Yeah, of course, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what I'm here for. To just learn and look at code snippets. Paste it in, man. Let's have a look. How you doing, whiskey trails? What's happening? https colon double forward slash ctxt dot io forward slash two forward slash ardasegvk Hold on, hold on Cool, that's the AI coming in Now it fades out a bit quick But it's working, so that's great Right, let's have a look Contest A context Share where you see it, right, okay Ooh, 3D Alright Oh my God, holy cow. Okay, what's up? Just opinion about your code in general. I'm not a good person to ask, to be honest. Good uh, drinking whiskey. Nice, good man. I'm drinking sugar-free Fanta. Mm -mm -mm. All the best late night coders drink. Um. Wow, look at that. When you put that uh, Fanta in the, t the camera, it does something funny. Yeah, so teach you, is this all about your, um, are you just asking me to look at like your, your coding standards here? Do you think this code is hard to understand? Oh, okay. Uh, it looks really neat, man. It looks really neat. So we've got a ready function. You might want to put some comments on your on readies here, like what are these fields? Uh, it, I mean, it depends who's Is reading it. Is it strange right? to read? No, I think it uh, it looks good. Much better, much better syntax than me. You're you're setting your private and public variables correctly. Um, no, it looks great. I suppose, you know, it all depends on what you're going to do with your code. If you look at mine, I'm putting in, like, so I start off with pseudo code, right? And then I plug my code in after, underneath. So that way I'm kind of, like, explaining to myself what I'm about to do before I even code it. Uh, and then if someone else needs to look through my code later, they don't really need to worry about, like, looking at the code. They can just go for, like, jump through the comments and go, oh, yeah, uh-huh, that's what they're doing here. Um, so I'm trying to, I try to make it like that you actually don't need to look at the code at all. Um, and then, you know, if you find something relevant in the comment, then you can start digging into the code. I, I think that's easier than like literally stepping through every single thing and going, Oh, what's that do? What's that do? Um, also having a, like a descriptor for your, your funk is good as well, but who's going to use your code? Is it just for you? Or you're going to share it. If you've got a big team, then hell yeah, you're going to need a hell of a lot more comments. Um, you want to be saying, like, what the champion object is, uh, you know, what's the general gist behind this this function or method. But yeah, it's slick, man. That's good. Cool. Can we have a look? With another streamer. Is it strange to read with another streamer? I mean, sorry, with another streamer. What do you mean? You're going to do it. programming. Oh, cool. I mean, uh, if that's what you're doing, then yeah, maybe add a little bit more. Uh, just a few more comments. But a bit, it, like, it doesn't get much tidier than that. That's for sure. Slick. Very good. That's a big function, though. Um... It looks like you're doing every, you're doing everything in one class. Yeah. So I think the other thing you want to do is kind of break break down all these functions. I try to write cleaner code. Yeah, well, you're doing good. I think what you need to do code. is um and something that I've not done very well is you take a more of an object oriented approach to your code. So for example, update enemy hoverer. Where well, you probably want like an enemy object. Split right? that out. 
Classes should do one thing well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, so you want to split out your your code so that, um, you know, switch player is something that the player object is doing. Um, and then the player class is in charge of doing everything for the player and so on. I'm not doing a particularly good job, so I'm not a very good example for it, but you can see I've got an audio controller here. And our audio con my audio controller methods are all about audio control. And so any one of my other functions can go in here and uh, use the audio controller to do what they want. Uh, so it is in charge of all the audio. My character class is just here to move my character around and talk and things like that. My event controller is in charge of telling the character to do what it needs to do. So tell the character to move. Um, my player script is in charge of uh, allowing my player to move around the world. So in my uh, game tree here, my scene tree on the left, uh, you can see that uh, my player has a script responsible for all my player stuff. My balcony is a location, so... Very good comments from you. Seems you are an experienced programmer. Well, I'm all right. I wouldn't say I'm I'm that that good. I mean, look, your code is already <laughs> better than all my code put together. So, uh, but I think you know, there's a I've I've got some experience, but I wouldn't say uh, I am a great coder. Im uh, better at all. Yeah, definitely. The whiskey trance is better. Im, I'm amazed. You try. Uh, hold on. Try, try an apostrophe between the I and M whiskey trails. I'm just wondering if. Uh... Ha ha ha. <laughs> no, seriously, just because of the uh, the audio thing. M. I'm wondering if I it love pronounces this it. Bot. I'm... Trophy, congratulations. Oh. Well. You've received 100 messages today with Restream Chat. Oh, well, thank you very much, Restream, for your 100 messages thingy. And thanks, Teach You and Whiskey Trails and. Uh, and a rifter for sending lots of messages. Uh, if we get any more messages, then I might have to turn I'm off this better. stupid robot. <laughs> I'm better. That's better. That wor It works. Nice. So anyway, uh, it's like half 11. I, um, I've got the, the knackered sweat. Um, Navi wants me to come. Hey! I'll, I'll be coming. So... Uh, I think that is the end of my stream. I'm going to commit my code. Uh, oh, wait, before we go, teach you, you want to show us anything? Can we see anything? I want to see your spatial. Mm. I want to see it working. Is there any way we can, can view your, your working code? Why don't you send us a zip so we can play it on Thanks stream right now? Thanks for your opinion. That's all right. Bedtime for bears. Bedtime for bears. Are you a bear? Whiskey trails? <laughs> right, so I'm going to do, do a commit here. So, um, player, sorry, NPC movement update. Our NPCs can now take uh, move. That's why I didn't get your question. Uh, teach you, I was asking if uh, you've actually got a game we could look at so we could see that code actually working would be awesome. If you zip it up and send it over so we can have a have a little sneaky peek. Uh, our NPCs can now move from one location to the next. So I think tomorrow's stream is going to be on pathing and I'm going to have the fun joy of uh where is it now we're going to look at dykstra's uh pathing algorithm we're going to see if i can get our give our characters our npcs some artificial intelligence rather than saying oh you've got to go from here to here to here we could just say you've got to go here and the npc will uh, move at a given speed that which means they'll be they'll stay at a given location for a certain while or maybe we could have like a a period of time where they don't exist in the world. Now that would be annoying, wouldn't it? Now we just got to move them instantly from A to B, and then wait for wait to B, and then move them instantly to E. Um. So yeah, that's going to be fun. 
I can't wait to get characters moving around. Then we're going to have, have behavior to our characters. So our NPCs will be doing stuff at a given location um, rather than just walking around. Uh, so our NPCs can move from one location Fight to the next. Fight on 12 is not online. I just navigate him. Fight on 12? Oh, is that, uh, is that the dude you're working with? Teach you, are you streaming as well? Let me see your stream. Let me have a look. Twitch. TV. Taichu 78. No. No. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm following you anyway, just in case you do. Um, and I'll put my notifications on. What about, uh, so, Phyton. Is that, is, so is Phyton the streamer? That you're working with. You can see his videos. Fight on 12. Cool. Let's have a look. Uh, follow. Videos. Oh, oh, let's turn on my notifications. Yes. Cool. Ah, oh, nice. Awesome. You know what? I'm so glad there's other people doing this as well. Fantastic. Cool. Nice. Sweet. Let's have a look. Ooh. Oh, yeah, he's in the uh, Godot chat. Um, I'm in there now, actually. I'm in the, uh, uh, well, the learning room. I'm on quiet, though. I'm muted. But, uh, I don't know if I've seen Phyton around. Probably have. We are talking in German, but you can see what is happening in the code or engine. Cool. Let's so be watching some videos to see how. It... Cool. Take day five or later. Take day five or later. I'm on day eleven here. Is this it here? No. Ah, okay. Ah, here's the code. That looks familiar. All oh, right, so look. It is, uh, it is all broken down by class then. You're just showing me one, one little element. So what are you doing on the project, teacher? Are you going to be coding or are you doing graphics or everything? Player amount. Wow. Just education. Cool. Yeah, this looks pretty hardcore. These guys, uh, this guy's a lot better than me. It's like a, like a chess. Cool. Wow. I have never written code in Godot. Well, it wasn't so long ago I could have said the same thing. It doesn't take long. You know, I, um, I keep mentioning this one, but this is where... Uh, this is where we started. With this one here? Yes, just a simple game. Yeah, Godot Engine 3 platform game tutorial from Heartbeast. That's what I started with. I don't do any of the 2D stuff, but uh, it sets, it gives you the basics, and it's really easy. Once you've done that, you will be off. I tell you, it's, it's, not, it's not that hard. Uh, even the Whiskey Trails was uh, flying away with it as soon as you did that. Heart Beast. <laughs> Heart Beast! <laughs> Cool. Uh, I have put notifications on. I put a follow in there. So um, I will be keeping an eye out. That's awesome. Nice one, Tichi. And I will see you inside uh, Discord. I am a Jellyhound in the Discord. Um, for some reason, I can't get to my Ubuntu right now. Synergy down. Oh, my Synergy server is not working. 
Cursor is locked. Jelly hound. Oh. Jelly hound. Yep, that's me. Scroll lock. There we go. Hey. I don't know why my scroll lock keeps going. Uh oh. Has it done it again? Won't let me oh, there we go. Jelly hound. And uh yeah. I'm in the study hall right now. On uh the Godot, Godot engine. Is that where you guys is that where you were? On Discord? We are Jelly Hound L O L. We are Jelly Hound. Um so event controller, so what else did I do? Um so we added a new function. Okay. Perhaps we will have a clean code session. Sounds good. I am up for that. Also to choose seventy eight. To choose seventy eight uh on Discord. Cool. Uh, why don't you jump in now and I'll add you as a friend. Um, yes. Cool. Come to the study hall. I'll just throw you in there. For NPC transition audio. With fade in, out. I will write you APN. I did. Um, all right, there we go. Committing. And now quarter to 12. Um, that's probably my longest session I've done. Uh, man, I am feeling it. My ass is sore. I haven't stood up. I haven't taken a break. Uh, but it's it's been so much nicer to be visited by you guys thanks whiskey trials thanks teach you uh honestly it just makes it easier to have a bit of company night dude have good a good night day, Nate. you too you two guys take care and uh i'll be back tomorrow 9 p.m bst have a good one cheers guys Listen!